Welcome to Light at Speed, a new short segment explaining technical lighting subjects quickly. Today, I wanted to explain CRI, what it is, why it's useful and where it might fall short. CRI stands for Color Rendering Index and was devised by the CIE, or to use their full name, La Commission Internationale de l'Eclairage, who were originally formed in 1913. CRI is a measure of how faithfully a white light source recreates color when compared to an ideal source of the same color temperature. Typically, this is an incandescent light bulb, as it's a black body emitter and produces a full and flat spectrum. But it can be the CIE defined daylight phase they call D65. D65 is an average spectrum of the midday sunlight in Western and Northern Europe. The test source is compared against the reference source and both are used to illuminate eight standard samples. The perceived colours are then compared using a standard formula, then averaged to get the final CRI. These days, we use handheld photometers, which measure the CRI accurately by analysing the spectral output of a light source and then calculating it. The colour samples used as classic CRI measurements are these eight Munzel pastels. These unsaturated colours are evenly distributed over the complete range of hues, and a value is given to how well a source renders each of them. This value is from 0 to 100. An average of all the numbers is given as the RA number. Many, however, have said that these unsaturated colours do not help with predicting how well a source will render more vibrant colours. So, six more saturated samples were added. These included red, or R9, and skin tones, R13. The average of this extended set is given as the RE number, which is a more complete representation. In Europe and Asia, when a CRI number is given, they normally use the extended set, or RE. But in North America, the 8-sample RA value is more usually used. However, even this extended CRI measurement does not cover all the bases. The measurements need to be altered above 5000 Kelvin to use the daylight reference D65. CRI only truly works for white light with a specific colour temperature. Not particularly useful for coloured light or light when it's very warm or very cool. Many even suggest that the sample colours are not saturated enough for manufacturers to struggle rendering them. CRI is however a useful metric to compare the majority of light sources against one another. It has been used successfully for many years and I'm sure will still be the standard for a while. However, a new colour rendering metric, which attempts to go one step further, called TM3015, is starting to get traction, and I'll try and explain that in an upcoming episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video, and if there are any other terms or technologies that you would like me to explain, please let me know in the comments or drop me an email. Thanks so much. Bye bye.